right now in the United States, one in six Americans is not talking to a close friend or family member because of politics. We yes. find that family yeah. schisms are at an all-time high. And the result is that people are suffering just completely unnecessarily. It's like people don't know the rules anymore. It's like, I, I'm going to step over $100 bills to get to nickels. I mean, I'm going to stop talking to my mom because she voted for Trump. I mean, or whatever. It's just so crazy. It's like we forgot all of these basics of what brings that, how human love brings happiness to us. So that's one of the reasons that Oprah and I wrote that chapter is that everybody comes to us and is t- talking to us about this. It's like, ah, oh, I haven't talked to my parents. I haven't talked to my children. I, have a, I had a friend who told me that he, he has, a, he has a, a 15-year-old grandson, he thinks, but he hasn't talked to his daughter for the past 30 years. Oh I'm thinking, no way, man. No way. I said, why? He says, well, we just didn't see eye to eye. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, growing up, I remember spirited political discussions around the holidays. We had family members on both sides, and they'd argue and yell, and then they'd hug it out and and go on their merry way, and we'd see each other again the next holiday. It was not this like complete schism and separate from one another based on politics. Yeah, you know, our families are microcosms of what's actually happening to our country and to our world right now, which is being pulled apart. For, well, for a lot of different reasons. One is that the people are, are, are predatory. You know, leaders and media are predatory. And the more we hate, the more they profit and the less, and less happy we are. And there's technology that's actually accelerating these trends. And this is a huge problem. So we got to, man, we need a love rebellion in this world is what we need. Well, we've been laughing about that internally because we found that our negative show titles perform better than the positive ones. And we're a show about bringing positivity, but it doesn't lead to the clicks and downloads. I know. So what we should call this one, this is going to be all about, actually it's going to be about positivity and love, but let's call it how to hate your enemies more effectively. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. So so there was something very brilliant, right, that you just said. And I was talking to AJ about this earlier when we were prepping for this interview, which is if we're going to discuss love in such a way, right, then what we have is people that we care immensely about and we need to protect them. And the only way to protect them is with intolerance to which that would harm them. Right. I know. It's crazy. I've been getting a little bit dismayed with some of the guests who come on and it's always about this love. And, but we need to protect our family, which we're now discussing is how important it is to us. But also as we're developing, we find out what our core values are. Those core values propel us into our best self. And if you are not ready and able to protect those core values with intolerance or hate, you will be subjected by outside forces that will work to destroy you. Right. Now, this is all true. And the truth of the matter is, of course, we have values, and that's a very good thing to have. But here's the point. When you have values, they should be only ever used as a gift and never as a weapon. You've eviscerated the moral content of your opinions and your values and your, I mean, all of your beliefs. If you if you use them as a cudgel, you know, you can say, oh, I have these beliefs about my politics or my religion, whatever it happens to be. They're like a bouquet of flowers, and you open the door, and I smack you across the face with this bouquet of flowers. Well, guess what? That was not effective as a as a, a gesture of love. Quite the contrary. You have to you have to understand that it only ever works as a gift, never as a weapon. And and that's what what people are being encouraged to forget. Quite frankly, they're saying if you have these views, if you have these values, if somebody disagrees with you, you need to cancel them. You need to get them out of your life. But that, those are the people who are encouraging you to do that. If they're, they're your college professors or your cable host or your presidential candidate is telling you to do that, then they're trying to profit and even at your expense. What I'm really curious about your perspective on is, so looking at the family unit and love and bringing positivity to those around us, there's this growing virtual world that we're all exposing ourselves to where most of this hate and intolerance lies. But we're not sharing that even with family members. We'll be on our screen separately at the dinner table. I was traveling across Europe, and I didn't see as many screens. But in the U.S., if you go out to dinner, you see the parents are on their phones. My wife and I will turn to each other. We'll look. And then the kids are on their iPads. And they're living in a virtual world that isn't supporting this love, isn't supporting each other. It's full of hate, full of negativity. But they're not actually sharing what they're seeing and consuming that's then 
leading to these ideas internally, the struggle, and ultimately this unhappiness. Yeah. No, we get to, to understand that phenomenon, we got to get back to the basic neuroscience of what's happening and how we're being manipulated in terms of our neurophysiology. So if I said, hey, AJ, I got a, I got a strategy for you for how to get your calories and become healthy. Eat every meal at McDonald's. You'd be like, what do you? You're crazy. That's insane. Because quite, quite, it's nothing wrong with McDonald's from time to time. But if you eat every meal at McDonald's, you're going to get too many calories, not enough nutrients. You'll become malnourished and obese at the same time, and you'll be constantly hungry because your body's going to be craving ma- these all your macronutrients that you need in balance and abundance. Okay, now that's the same thing as what's happening to us when we're tied to our devices. Why? Because the one thing we really need from our our family relationships, and for that matter from any relationships, is a neuropeptide in the brain that functions as a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin is the hormone of human bonding. It's intensely pleasurable. It's the reason that you know when when your first child is born and you and you and you lay eyes eye contact, it's like the Fourth of July inside your head, and you would immediately die for this infant who doesn't know who you are. And and, and you know, and neuroscientists will say that so you don't leave the baby on the bus or something. But the truth of the matter is, no, 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 it's magic. It's actually magic. We crave oxytocin with our family members, with our friends, you know, with our close associates, with our, with our kin, with our people is what it comes down to. Now, what happens is when we have social media, we think that it's going to give us what we need because it's, it's kind of a social contact. But oxytocin comes from eye contact and human touch. It's, so social media is basically the McDonald's fries and milkshakes of social yes. life is what it comes down to. And the problem is you don't get what you need, but you get addicted. 